Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Open Learning Analytics at Uniform Services University. Thank you for attending. My name is Lisa DiPietro and I am Unicom's Marketing Coordinator. I will be facilitating today's webinar, which will feature Eric Hansen, Chief Knowledge Officer at Uniform Services University, as he presents USU's Open Learning Analytics Implementation Story. Unicom's Gary Gilbert, Technical Lead of Integrations and Analytics, will then follow with a presentation that addresses general learning analytics challenges faced by higher education institutions. This webinar today will be recorded and we will be sending out the link to the viewable version on, U on Unicom's YouTube channel. Before we begin, I would like to give a quick overview for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Adobe Connect interface. On the left of the screen, you will see a main pod where our speakers will be presenting slides. If you would like to see this pod larger, there is a full screen button at the top of the pod you can click to view the presentation full screen. You can return to regular view by clicking on the full screen button again. On the upper right portion of the screen, you will see a chat window. These webinars are intended to be interactive. Please type any questions or comments you may have in this chat window. We will watch the chat window and take your questions at the end of the webinar. Please note that all attendees will be able to view your question in the chat window. If you would like to chat with me or any other attending individual directly, simply click on their name and select the Start Private Chat option. In addition, you will see the Unicom Services for Learning Analytics data sheet available for download in the Files pod to the right of your screen. To download the data sheet, simply click on the file name and then click on the Download File button at the bottom of the Files pod. First, I would like to give you a brief overview of Unicon. After that, we will go into today's presentation and then close with an open discussion and answer any questions attendees may have. We will also allow time after Eric's portion of the webinar for questions and answers. Unicon and USU are excited to bring this webinar to the higher education community. Unicon was founded in 1993 and is a leading provider of IT consulting, services, and support for education technology and works with institutions and organizations to find solutions to meet business challenges. Unicon is the fifth largest computer consultant in the Phoenix, Arizona area and is organically funded and grown. Unicon is headquartered in Gilbert, Arizona and staffed throughout the United States. Unicon specializes in services for the open source learning analytics process, including collection, storage, analysis, and result communication and action. Unicon has played an active role in developing an open source approach to the learning analytics process. Unicon's key capabilities include software development, technology solution delivery, and IT services and support. Unicon also specializes in using open source technologies to deliver flexible and cost effective systems in the areas of identity and access management, mobile computing, student success, enterprise portals, learning analytics, and learning management systems. Institutions embrace open source options as viable alternatives to the cost of proprietary solutions. In comparison to the proprietary options in the market, open source technology allows for increased control, choice, ROI, and reduced cost. Now I will go on and introduce um, Eric Hansen from Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences. Eric is the Chief Knowledge Officer at USU, and he oversees academic technology support, business and research computing systems, and web development. Previously, he served as a staff officer in the Army Medical Department CIO's office with primary responsibility for Army Medicine's presence on the Army AKO portal. Eric, I will now hand it over to you. <clears throat> okay, great. Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm briefly going to talk about the university and then what we're doing um, in the learning analytics area. Uh, not many people are very familiar with us. We're actually part of the United States Department of Defense. We're the Department of Defense Medical School. Our students are actually enrolled, or, or I should say members, our enrolled students are members of the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, and Public Health Services. Uh, each year we graduate over 300 um, students 
in uh, with either MDs, PhDs, um, graduate school of nursing degrees, either as masters or PhDs, and then we have a, a pretty diverse um, biomedical sciences program. Part of what makes USU unique is that our MDs actually take an additional 700 hours of military unique curriculum. So everything from global health to operational planning to military emergency medicine is covered in our curriculum above what's normally covered in a traditional United States medical school. Next slide, please. So we are uh, we have been using Sakai since 2010, so we're actually just hitting our five-year anniversary. We are running on top of a LDAP and CAS infrastructure for which we use not only for Sakai, but a number of our other web-based applications for authentication. And for those of you that might be familiar with the uh, military's authentication environment, we've integrated CAS with our um, with the common access card in the Department of Defense. So now you can users log in with username and password, but they can also use the CAC card. Um, we use Drupal for our primary university website, and we've been expanding that use out to other sites in the university. Um, we've made a number of open source contributions in different areas. Uh, you'll find that we've, we've got contributions in Sakai to LDAP. Um, we made contributions to work that's being done on CAS. We're also working with Unicon on the, the HaloCAS um, tool caching effort, and then, of course, the Open LRS and Open Dashboard work. Next slide, please. So our, our current plans are to actually, ironically, go to 10.5 next week we've not really been able to leverage the work that we've been um, funding and uh, that will start happening then in november so we'll deploy open lrs and open dashboard uh, into our architecture and start capturing data from sakai uh, we've also worked with gary on deploying a tool against the discussion forums in 10.5, so that will allow us to do some interesting, I hope, analysis. Um, and then we have a number of faculty that work with Articulate as a way to present content to our students. So we're going to start working on some open dashboard um, cards to allow faculty members to look at student data coming out of Articulate in Sakai and then see how students are responding to um, the educational material. Probably um, over, you know, over the late spring into the summer, we, uh, we have a lecture capture system for which we're going to be deploying that company's analytics tool and hope to start integrating the data on what students watch and how long they watch it and how often they watch it against the data coming out of Sakai. And then, of course, as, as we move forward, then we'll be doing additional dashboard visualizations and uh, seeing what other data, like registrar data, we might roll into the, um, into the open LRS data pool. So that, that's kind of where we are right now. I, I guess the reality is, is, is we've been waiting in anticipation of getting this up and running. And so moving to 10.5, Next week's going to be a big event for us. We actually have almost no time where somebody isn't being taught at the university. So our students are off at military exercises starting next week. So I get um, only one third of our, our, our overall student cohort is here next week. So um, I don't suffer as many flings and arrows um, from people that need access to Sakai when I take it down when everybody else is gone. And that's my part, and I welcome any other any questions. We will give attendees a minute to um, type in any questions if they have any. Doesn't look like we do. So um, next, we are going to move on to um, Gary Gilbert's portion of the webinar. Um, I would like to introduce Gary. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Gary is the technical lead for integrations and analytics at Unicon. 
Um, Gary has over 10 years experience designing and developing learning systems for clients ranging from small community colleges to global publishers. Gary is an active member of the Aperio Learning Analytics Initiative. He is particularly interested in the intersection of open learning technology standards and open educational resources. All right, and with that, Gary, I will hand it over to you. Thanks, Lisa, and, uh, and, and thanks to, uh, to Eric for taking the time to join us today. Uh, and, and good luck with your uh, Sakai deployment next week. Um, so a, a little bit of an agenda first. I'm going to talk about um, open learning analytics, you know, what that means, uh, some of the different components of an open learning analytics environment. I'll talk about the realization uh, of an open learning analytics environment through the Aperio Learning Analytics Initiative. Then I'll give a demo of some of those components, and then we'll talk about uh, kind of future roadmap. So <clears throat> if we talk about open learning analytics, um, you know, really what are, we, what are we trying to get to there? What's the overall, overall goal of learning analytics and, you know, in particular, open learning analytics? If you, if you think about what we're trying to get to, um, it's really about improving student outcomes. And that's different from other analytics uh, and how that's applied to other industries. So if you think about other industries and how they use analytics, often it's about finding hidden value. So if you think about uh, financial services, for example, um, they, they're applying analytics in a way to maybe find an, an undervalued asset. Or, to use an example that I, that I really like, if you think about sports and the evolution of analytics in sports over the last decade or so, teams are really leveraging big data and analytics to find an undervalued asset, you know, specifically a player. So they're looking at beyond the traditional statistics in sports and mining data to find an undervalued asset. In education, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to find trends and then step in when we see those trends going the wrong way to improve student outcomes. So I like Solar's um, definition uh, of learning analytics, uh, in, in particular open learning analytics. And really it's about the application of big data, meaning very specifically meaning you know, certain technologies, and we'll talk about some of those um, shortly, and open processes, software, and models. So not just software, but how do we uh, onboard students and faculty and staff uh, to get used to analytics and, and the outcomes of analytics, but also the predictive models that are generated. So it's, it's more than just open source software. It's a whole ecosystem of different open processes and analytics models, and then you use the software to drive student outcomes. And a, a, an interesting way to think about that is uh, the analytics diamond. And I have to give credit to uh, former Uniconner, um, Aaron Zukoski. Uh, he came up with this notion of an analytics diamond probably about a year, year and a half ago or so. And it's a nice way to represent all of the parts uh, of an open learning analytics environment. And we'll go into detail uh, around each of these, but really you can think of these as modular components. You don't need all of them. But you need, you need some, and you can kind of mix and match as you need them. So uh, on the far left side, we have collection, and that's really about capturing activity from a student. Um, at the top of the diamond, storage, that's about taking that activity that you captured and persisting it. On the far right, we have analysis, so taking the activity information that you've captured, mixing it with other information, you know, potentially student data from your student information system, and running some analytics models against it. Uh, in the middle, we have communication, so taking all of that data and presenting it to a user in, in some format that's useful to them. And at the bottom, we have really where the value is uh, from a improving outcomes perspective, taking all of that data that we've captured and analysis that we've run and taking some action to improve student outcomes. So let's go into each of these. So if we think about collection, um, really what that's about is capturing interaction with your system. So if you're, if you're an LMS user, if you're using Sakai or Moodle or Canvas, 
Well, there's, the good news is this is already happening. Sakai has the ability to capture these events. Moodle is doing something similar. Canvas is doing something similar. But really, it's about capturing clicks and views and different interaction from students with your system. Once you're doing that, once you're capturing it, and you might already be doing that. A lot of systems already do that. They're protect, potentially storing things in log tables or logging things to files. You have to think about what events that are being captured are important to you. So what events do you want to capture and persist long term? And then once you have the list of events that you want to capture and the list of events that you want to persist, you, you, your next decision is how do I make those events available to be stored? And that's where different standards such as uh, the Experience API, uh, also referred to as the Tin Can API, or IMS Caliper, uh, which is an emerging standard out of IMS uh, to, to model different events, uh, come in. So you, you're, you're capturing interaction with your system. You, you've determined, I want to capture these certain events. You pick a format, and you can think of XAPI and Caliper as kind of a schema in JSON format or events, and you want to make them available. So that's where the next step comes in, storage. So you've captured the event. You're going to make them available via some standard format. And the place you're going to store them typically is what we call a learning record store. Uh, and you can think of a learning record store as, as really a set of web services on top of some sort of data store. Um, there are a few of these out there in the marketplace today. Probably the most well-known one is, is Learning Locker, um, but there are others. And, and the real key components for a learning record store are, are one, uh, storage, meaning you're going to be capturing a lot of events, a lot of data, so you need uh, significant storage, typically disk space, uh, to handle that uh, a number of events. The message format, so do you want to just support XAPI format? Do you want to support just Caliper format? Or do you want to support both of those formats plus you know, something else? Um, as with all things in the analytics, learning analytics world, data security is extremely important. And specifically in the case of storage, we mean <clears throat> not only data in transit, so as it's collected and then messaged to the storage, to the learning record store, but also what we call data at rest, so data in the storage solution, making sure that that's protected. And then what we've seen is typically the event information is valuable, and historically learning record stores have only been used to capture and store events. But often in an analytics uh, environment, you need you know, significantly more data types. So you need events, but you also need user information and demographic information and grades and other things. So what we're, what we're starting to see is an evolution toward a learning record store, but it, it maintains more than events. It's really becoming a learning record warehouse where, yes, it has event data, but it also has uh, a grade data. It also has potentially student and demographic data and other, other important things that are part of your analytics model. So you're collecting events, you're storing them in a learning record store, potentially with some other information. Now it's time to run some analysis uh, on those. And the way that you typically do that in an open learning analytics environment is with an application that, that's typically referred to as a learning analytics processor. And you can think of a learning analytics processor as really just a manager of that entire workflow. And the workflow is often referred to as a pipeline. And you can think about a pipeline just the way that you would think about a gas or an oil pipeline. Things go into it and things come out of it. And in our case, we have inputs, which are that data that's in that learning record store, maybe data coming out of your student information system, maybe data coming out of your LMS. Those are all your inputs, and they're coming in in a variety of different formats and different ways and it's part of the learning analytics processor's job to normalize that data and make it available for processing, which is the next step in the pipeline. You've taken your inputs, you've, you've normalized them in some form uh, so that they're available to process, <clears throat> and you run your analytics model. That's the processing step. And maybe that's a, 
just a very simple aggregator of data. You just want to know how many events happened, how many of, of a certain type of events happened, or it's something more complex like a predictive model um, that is finding at-risk students. So you, you have the inputs, you're running the model, and that model is outputting something. And, and typically what it's outputting is a smaller subset of that data, and you're, you're probably storing that. So you have your input, it gets processed, the output gets stored in a persistent store, and then you make that available via some API. So that's your kind of typical learning analytics pipeline. So you have, you've collected the data, you've stored it, you run analysis on it, you, you've determined some useful insights, and now it's time to take action on those insights. So that's the next step in the diamond. And when we say action, it could, it could mean really anything, right? It could be um, you run a report, you generate a notification, um, but, but often what we've, what we've seen is that it's about intervention. So we've, we've captured a bunch of information, we've run analysis of that, and we've determined that these particular students are at risk, and we need to take some action to get them back on track. And there are different types of, of intervention. You, you could strive to you know, improve retention. Um, you could strive to improve performance uh, in, in, different, in, in other different metrics. Uh, but really, it's really about getting that early alert from analysis and then taking action on it. And then the last piece is the communication piece. So we've, we've collected data. We've stored it. We've run analysis on it taking some action on that data. And now, in addition to taking action, we want to make it available uh, to the appropriate user in the appropriate way so that they can gain their own insights on it. And there's a number of mechanisms to do this. There's, you know, there's no shortage of, of dashboard options out there. Um, and dashboards are typically the way that this data is presented. And often, those dashboards contain you know, a number of different visualizations of the data it makes it really easy to see trends and spot outliers um, so that potentially faculty or staff, in addition to your kind of automated action steps, can take their own actions on some of this data. And we'll, we'll show an example of that uh, during the demo. So, so those are really the components at, at a high level of an open learning analytics environment. And the Aperio Learning Analytics Initiative is trying to uh, make those components um, available as open source software projects. So Unicon is part of that, uh, along with, uh, with uh, USU, um, Marist, uh, University of Amsterdam, and, and some other partners. Uh, and, we're, and we're moving that forward. So over the next slides, I'll be talking about each of the components and how they map back to uh, the, the uh, Learning Analytics Diamond components. So here's a picture of uh, the different components within uh, the Aperio Learning Analytics Initiative. And you can see that they model the diamond pretty well. On the far left side, we have um, the LMS. Uh, and, and in that case, we have some different tools if you're using Sakai or modules if you're using Moodle uh, and some other kind of plugins that will plug into the LMS to start to capture that event data. We have an open source uh, learning record store uh, called OpenLRS. We have an open source learning analytics processor, which is aptly named today the learning analytics processor. But uh, if anybody has suggestions on names, um, we're open, because that's something we're interested in doing, is, is renaming that. Uh, at the bottom, we have Student Success Plan, which is a, a project that has been around for a while, but is getting, uh, really getting some new life uh, as part of um, the learning analytics initiative. And in the middle, we have Open Dashboard, which is a, really a learning-focused uh, dashboard framework. And I'm going to go into each of these uh, in detail. And let's start with OpenLRS. So OpenLRS uh, is a web application. Uh, it's written in Java and uh, uses the Spring Boot framework. Uh, it supports a number of different data sources. So if you're interested in using uh, Elasticsearch, you can use that. If you want to use MongoDB, you can use that. And if you want to use something else, there's the opportunity to build that in as well. And 
Today, OpenLRS supports uh, the Experience API, uh, but hopefully very soon uh, we'll have support for the uh, Caliper specification as well. And really the goal of OpenLRS is to provide a very, very high scale and performance <clears throat> application that can capture events from a number of different sources. And I think we've done a pretty good job at that so far. The, uh, the next piece of the diamond uh, in, in terms of the Aperio Learning Analytics Initiative is the uh, Learning Analytics Processor. And, and you can think of the Learning Analytics Processor as, as a framework uh, for the execution of those pipelines that I mentioned. So the, the Analytics Processor today can take data in. It can take data in in some different formats, typically a CSV file. It can run a, a model against that data, output it, uh, to, a, to a database, um, typically MongoDB, but some other data sources as well. And then <clears throat> it makes that available via an API. So it fulfills that notion of a pipeline, taking inputs, doing processing, returning outputs, and then making that available as an API. Uh, and we're in the process of evolving this application to start to take advantage of, um, you know, the best tools for the job, uh, starting with Hadoop, which if you're familiar with big data, it's kind of the de facto solution around uh, processing in big data. So we're working on support for Hadoop and the learning analytics processor. And once we have that in place, we'll really be able to scale it up uh, to, uh, to the point where it's necessary. The next piece um, in the Aperio Learning Analytics Initiative Diamond uh, is the action piece or student success plan. So Student Success Plan uh, is an open source uh, case management system. So you can think of that as um, really kind of an advisor facing application. And the real value of Student Success Plan um, in, in this context is that it integrates with the learning analytics processor. And so I'm gonna show you a demo of that shortly. But the idea is that as the analytics processor runs and <clears throat> at risk students are uh, found, will automatically create an early alert in the student success plan. And then the final component uh, is Open Dashboard. And Open Dashboard is a framework uh, for displaying visualizations and data views that we call cards. And so you can think of a card as really its own self-contained uh, small application. And the dashboard is really the framework that provides data and infrastructure to those cards. And it's a very, very client-heavy application. So it uses AngularJS and the Spring Boot framework. And the goal here is not necessarily to develop kind of out-of-the-box dashboards, although we certainly have a plan to uh, create a, a library of kind of standard visualizations, but give institutions and uh, developers the opportunity to have a framework where all that plumbing is in place and they can easily build their own visualizations of the data they have available. So I'm gonna uh, switch over uh, momentarily and, and go through the demo. So we're gonna start the demo in student success plan. I'm going to sign in as a, as a coach or um, you know, a coach in a student success plan speak is, is really, you can think of it as an academic advisor. And I'm going to go to uh, my caseload. So this particular coach uh, is responsible for this collection of students here. And I'm going to click on this student, Skylar Hunting, and I'm going to look at her early alerts. So you can see that she has a number of early alerts that have been generated, uh, some today in preparation for this demo. Uh, but what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna show you the, the running of the learning analytics model and the generation of a new early alert. So if we go over to uh, the learning analytics processor, I'm gonna sign in as an administrator of, of institution one. And I'm gonna find my, my analytics pipeline and I'm gonna select the pipeline that I wanna run. And when I click run, what's gonna happen is the learning analytics processor is going to pull in a, a number of different data sources. In our case, it's a collection of different CSV files that model things like events, 
grade, student um, enrollments. It's going to run uh, the predictive model uh, on that data and generate some output. Uh, that output is going to be processed, and as part of that process, if when uh, outputting the data, anyone in the model has a risk score of a medium or high, we're going to automatically send an early alert notification to student success plan. So let's run that now. That's going to run, and you can see in the lower left corner that it completed. Typically, it wouldn't run that quickly, but I have a very small data set here. Then if I go back to student success plan, and I refresh, uh, you can see that a new alert was just created uh, just a moment ago. So this is pretty powerful stuff. You can imagine that institutions will be able to collect data, uh, they'll be able to run an analytics model against it, and dynamically create these uh, early alerts <clears throat> that will automatically show up in the different coaches' queues. But, and I, so I think there's some real value there. And I think this is one of the key components that we've been talking about in, inside of the uh, Learning Analytics Initiative, and we've now realized. So let me just show you a couple other uh, views of that output data. I'm going to go into Moodle. I'm going to sign into Moodle as an instructor. And I'm going to go to my course. And this is the course that we ran the model against, Demo Course 13. And when I click on this dashboard AWS link, it's going to do an IMS uh, Learning Tool Interoperability Tool Launch, an LTI Tool Launch, from Moodle over to Open Dashboard, which is running out in, uh, in Amazon uh, Web Services on EC2. And it's going to display a visualization, actually two visualizations, of the model output data. So let's do that. So I did the LTI launch out. Um, the dashboard is rendered in the iframe here. The, the dashboard, when it received this LTI launch, said, okay, I got an LTI launch from Demo Course 13. Let me make a web service call to the learning analytics processor to get the a model output for Course 13. And let me call back to Moodle to get the roster uh, for that course. So it got the roster, and it got the uh, model output and matched it up to the student. So that's one view of the model output that, you know, potentially an instructor could look at and say, okay, it looks like Skylar needs some help. Uh, let's, let's talk with her. And then here's another view of that data. Same data, just a different view. Uh, and that's, a, that's this bubble view which automatically, um, number one, draws the instructor or draws the viewer to the student at risk by, one, color coding the bubble and making it bigger. So, you know, obviously, we, if, if we had somebody that was high risk, they would have a red bubble that was really big and it would be really obvious for an instructor or, um, you know, faculty member to be able to say, okay, this particular student is in, in trouble. Um, let's, let's do something to, uh, to stop this um, and get them back on track. So with that, I'm going to go back to the slides. And just quickly talk about roadmap. So um, if, you've, if you've seen one of our presentations recently uh, and seen our demos before, um, you know, I, I think it's obvious we've made some really good progress uh, on these different components. And, and we're hoping to make more, uh, and, and I think we're going to. I mean, we, all of these things are in certain states of uh, in progress, and that's a good sign. So on OpenLRS, uh, the kind of top-level roadmap item uh, is support for the IMS caliper specification. This work has been started uh, and, and then unfortunately had to stop, uh, but I expect uh, hopefully next week for this to get going again and, um, and, and get some support for caliper uh, different metric profiles into OpenLRS, uh, you know, sooner than later. The learning analytics processor, um, really the core uh, top, top uh, roadmap item for the learning analytics processor is the move to the big data or the Hadoop ecosystem. Um, functionally, the processor is going to remain, you know, generally the same, but we're constrained today uh, by the amount of data that we can process in one 
pipeline by moving to Hadoop and its uh, you know sister components. Uh, we'll be able to increase the scalability of, of the processor significantly uh, to really, really be able to handle some um, large amounts of data. For a student success plan, uh, we want to continue to automate the creation of early alerts. Uh, so you saw the beginnings of that in the demo. We were able to automatically create an early alert and student success plan, uh, but there's more work there. Um, we, need, we want to be able to get really specific around why an early alert was generated um, and give potential remediation, uh, a course of remediation, uh, give that information to the coach and to the student. And then in Open Dashboard, um, you know, the framework is really uh, solid at this point. Uh, the ability to create visualizations and cards is there. Uh, the, abil the ability to plug in different data sources is there. So at this point, it's about building out a library of different visualizations so that you can take a dashboard, you can take Open Dashboard, and have something to run right away. Uh, so we're, we're in progress there. We have a couple of visualizations in the queue right now that are getting worked on. Um, you know, so in addition to the bubble chart, we'll have another uh, mechanism to display that model output data. And then there's a few other things that are coming down the road. Um, so I think we're going to get there. Uh, if you check back with us early next year, uh, I think there will be a number of visualizations ready to go in the dashboard. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to, uh, to Lisa for questions. Okay, and it doesn't look like we have any questions. So um, once again, I'd like to thank both of our speakers and thank everyone for taking the time out of their day to join us today. Um, we hope you found today's webinar informational. Um, if you'd like to reach out to us, please visit um, our website at www.unicon.net. Thank you very much and have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.